Hello and welcome to our discussion on cash flows. The focus of today's session is free cash flows and we are going to understand the determination of free cash flows using PAT, using PBIT and using CFO. In other words, we can arrive at free cash flows for the firm by using profit after tax or by using profit before interest and tax or by using CFO. In order to do that, let us take an example. The Given the balance sheet and income statement, first we will determine the cash flow from operation and then by using this information, we will determine free cash flows for the firm, free cash flows by using PBIT and free cash flows by using CFO. So we will use the indirect method of determining the CFO. The CFO is equal to PAT plus depreciation, add depreciation, depreciation and depreciation is 10,000, add interest, add interest, interest is equal to 22,000, then the changes in changes in the working capital because the because the income statement is prepared by using the accrual system there is a need to adjust the accrual items to determine the cash flows so the decrease in decrease in the we will will pick up the operating non cash current assets and operating non-cash current liabilities. So the decrease in the creditors have decreased from 28,000 to 6,000. So decrease in the creditors, decrease in creditors, decrease in creditors is um, will be the decrease in creditor is 6,000 so minus 22,000, that means we paid money to the extent of 22,000. Then outstanding expenses, increase in outstanding expenses, increase in outstanding expenses is uh, in this case 10 minus 8, so 2,000. That means we have not paid money. The debtors increase in the debtors. Increase in debtors is thirty thousand minus forty four thousand negative. Then stock increase in the stock. Increase in stock is three thousand minus eight thousand. So minus five thousand. The summation of this will give the cash flow from operation. So cash flow from operation is not same as PAT because of depreciation, because of interest, because of the changes in the working capital. And under the changes in the working capital, it is the creditors, the outstanding expenses, the changes in the debtors and the changes in the stock. Now we'll use this CFO and try to understand that CFO is not same as FCFF, free cash flows for the firm. The free cash flows for the firm is also an adjusted PAT, adjusted for non-cash, non-operating, the changes in the working capital and also the capex required. So PAT, if we take PAT as a basis for determining the FCF, so PAT will be 37,100 add depreciation and amortization. There is no amortization here. So add depreciation, add interest into 1 minus T 
we are taking interest into 1 minus t to make adjustment for the tax shield on interest. So the tax shield on interest is 30%. So adjusted interest is 15,400. Then less working capital changes. So working capital is the summation of the debtors, creditors, the summation of debtors, creditors, change in the stock and change in the change in the outstanding expenses. So the working capital changes is thirty nine thousand three hundred and less capex and the capex is the adjustment to the plant here we are not recognizing the R&D as a capex we'll only take the change in the plant the change in the plant is change in the plant plus depreciation so 19,000 minus 20,000 plus depreciation so plus depreciation so minus 9,000 will take as minus 9000 that is the excess of okay so the, uh, that shows the amount of capex required to maintain the present level of efficiency the summation of pat depreciation working capital changes and the capex along with the changes in the interest interest into 1 minus t will give us the free cash flows for the firm. But the same free cash flows for the firm can also be determined from PBIT or using PBIT. PBIT is 75,000 since this is post pre-interest and pre-tax there is no need to add back interest. So we'll add back will deduct less tax the tax is 0 0.30 30 percent so less tax that is 22,500 and 22,500 is the tax on PBIT and PBIT is 75,000 so the tax on PBIT is uh, 22,500 then add back depreciation is a non-cash item then less working capital less working capital and less capex so less capex so capex is minus 9,000 and working capital is minus 39,000 300 the summation of this will give the free cash flows for the firm as mentioned previously free cash flows can also be calculated from the CFO we can see the similarity between CFO and FCF so therefore FCFF can also be calculated from CFO so CFO is 29,000 29,800 but if you see that while calculating CFO we have added interest but without taking the interest tax shield so therefore we would like to deduct the tax shield on interest tax shield on interest or tax benefits of interest and tax benefit of interest is 30% is 30% of the interest. So 30% of interest is 0 0.30 into 22,000 into 22,000. Okay. So minus, so is 6,600 calculated as 30% of the interest then less capex less capex and capex we already calculated as 9000 
So the summation of this will give so 29,800 minus 6,600 minus 6,600 and minus 9,000. So FCF can be calculated by taking PAT or PBIT or CFO. So what is this FCF? FCF is the cash generated by the firm in this case assuming that there is no leverage. So this is a money available for both debt holders and the equity holders. So this 14,200 is not a statutory number but can be used for determining the value of the firm and for determining the value of the firm we take the discounted value of the free cash flows for the firm. So let us let, let me also calculate this FCCFO and slightly present it in a different manner. So PAT 37,100 depreciation is 10,000 interest non-cash that is 22,000 and the changes in the decrease in the working capital or the changes in the working capital will put the change in working capital is is summation of all these items here so the changes in the working capital is 39,200 so 37,100 depreciation is 10,000 then interest is uh, Mm, interest is 22,000 and the changes in the working capital is 39,300 negative that means increase in working capital results in have a negative effect on the cash flow how did we increase that because of the debtors and because of the stock so therefore, given a set of financial statements like balance sheet and income statement, it is possible to find the, a particular cash flow like CFO and make the necessary adjustments to find the free cash flows for the firm too.